Today, let's have a look at how you can build your very own modular computer system that snaps however you want it and does whatever you want it to do. What's up guys, Dark Dally here. Today I'm going to show you some of the basics on how you can start building your own little modular computer like the one I featured in my live stream video last night. Uh, I went through it a couple times for the viewers, but I'm going to go ahead and make this video here so that I can, you know, concisely show just, you know, me and you exactly how to start building one of these. And then in the following videos of this series, I'll show you all the different pieces you can make to build one. These are just the four starting pieces that I started off with. Now, let me show you the basic thing of this. If you didn't miss the video or are just wondering what this is about, the basic thing is, it's these little modular pieces which I made from the cubes and unlock settlement objects. These little cubes are found in the USO integrated menu, uh, structures, and then down here near the end, USO cubes. And there are these little Minecraft-like cubes with different textures. I'm using those because the cool part is, they snap to each other. And I'll show you how this is all made. First I want to show you what the whole point of this is. So. Uh, there's different switch arrangements. Let's say I want one with three switches. Now the way this works is all the inputs are on their left and all the imp uh, sorry the outputs are on the right. That way you can flow any kind of circuit you want from left to right. And there's really no risk of glitches or errors because it, because it's all arranged in a straight line. You don't worry about getting a big confusing network of logic gates and wires getting crossed, which is you know 99% the cause of glitches and stuff. Now let's say I, I have an object down here to operate. This is my, the load for my circuit and it's a door. Now let's say I want to create, you know, I only have these four blocks, so let's say I want to create a combination lock for that door. Just a very simple three button combination lock. Well, I got my three switches, then I would grab my combination, sorry, my combination lock module, which is right here. And these snap just right to the little I guess you could, this is like the motherboard for the circuit, and it just snaps, you know, right on anywhere it wants. We'll put it right here. So now I could just wire these switches up to this and have a combination lock. Let me show you how that's done. Well, actually, you know what? I was going to cut that. Let me actually go ahead and show you how it's done. I, I think I, I skipped the wiring too many times in my videos. So like I said, this is the inputs here. These are the outputs, and it's the same with this block. So I can just run these outputs straight across to the inputs on the next block. It's designed universally like this, so that no matter what the next block is, you could always just run oops, the wires straight across, and it will work. So let's just run these three wires straight to these. Now, I could have used the two-switch one and just split one of the you know, switches to go to two of these outputs, and it still would work. That's the whole point about this is, you know, plug-and-play, you know, universal kind of ability. Now, we'll just plug the generator to these three inputs so each of the three switches gets power. So all I've done is I simply wired these three switches inputs and now they go to the three you know inputs on the combination lock cube. Now it has one single output because it just goes to the door. Now there are ways to reprogram a combination lock and certainly I will come up with modules that allow you to reprogram things. This is just a very simple version. And it's simply, you know, the combination is simply one one zero or you know on on off. And the door is open, and that's the only combination that works it. If I turn that last switch on, you know, well, you know how this works. It's only going to work if these two switches are on. Like so. So, now, let's say, okay, so, you know, still, what's the point of all this? What, you know, you don't need big, huge blocks to do this. Well, the cool part about these is you can make these ahead of time. You can move them around, reuse them, and rearrange them. I can put, uh, this is a little safety switch module I made. Now what I can do is I can take this functioning combination lock and say I want a safety switch in this door. The safety switch could be anything. It could be a trip wire. It could be a pressure plate, you know. And let's just say um, it depends what you wire to the inputs there. So we'll just put it, we'll snap it right here after the combination lock. You can literally put it anywhere. So we'll just put it here. Now, the wiring it up is the same. Now, some of the inputs are special on these because some of these are special. Notice this has two inputs and this only has one output. Well, we'll just wire. And the way I do it is I put the default input in the back. So this just goes to that input there. Now, this is a safety switch, so it would require a switch to be wired to it. And that's what this other input's for. So I'll just grab a switch. 
There's one right here. We'll just park it. Let's park it out of the way. Let's park it right here. And we'll wire it to the other input. So now the safety has its input from the combination lock. See the combination lock, which went to the door, now just goes through a safety switch mechanism. Here's the door, uh, the switch for it, sorry. Now let's go ahead and let's wire the switch up. It, the switch, oops, see, does need power. So we'll get some power to the switch. Now normally it's not a good idea to run power into the middle of a logic system like I did here, but I haven't had any problems with this yet, and I will test to see, you know, test further to see exactly how far I can go with that. So let's go ahead and now wire the output. See, this also just has the one output. Wire it to the door. Okay. Now, I can go ahead and I can activate these first two switches to open the door. It functions just like it did before. You know, oops, wrong combination. It closes it. So it operates just like it did before, except if you turn this switch on, this is the safety switch, it kills it. And no matter what you do over here, it will not open it. Now I could go on and link about this and, and show you how, you know, I could take the time to rearrange these cubes, but the fact, you know, the, the, re the purpose behind this, sorry, is that you could put them in any order. I could put this safety switch, uh, now let's go ahead and see how this is made. First, let's start with, you know, this, which I guess is like the motherboard, you could say. Now you can use, you know, whatever kind of texture cube you want. I chose this one because it looks kind of high tech and computery. Let's go find one. Oops, nope. This one's actually down near the end. Not that it matters, you can pick any cube you want. Now, the way I built this right here is, whoops, you know, it's just a nice little point for them to snap on. And, you know, I just line up a few of these little guys, and then you can just use the pillar glitch, you know, or place anywhere and sink them down into the ground. It's probably actually easier to use the pillar glitch because you've got to group select them anyway. So, you know, we would just grab this. And then, of course, find a place where you can sink them into the ground. Sometimes it likes to be finicky, you know. And then you can just snap everything on top of it. Now, keep you want to keep in mind, you know, you can put these in any order, really. But, you know, I try to keep in mind, I, I try to keep at least one or two sides clear so that I can snap some of them adjacently, you know, just to save space on the board. Now, one thing about these cubes, they will only snap onto here in one orientation. Notice I have a little letter designation right there. It says SAF, so I know this is my safety switch. That's not a bad idea. That way you won't forget what's what. And I put those on the front. I say the front because these will only snap, no matter how much you rotate them, in that one direction. So when you're building one of these, the first you know thing you want to do, like the first real step, let's say that we're going to want to turn this right here into one of those little modular cubes. The first thing we want to do is snap it on top of another so we can see what direction it's facing. Okay, now, now we can go ahead and start wiring it. Now let's say we already have some kind of circuit in mind. Let's make, actually I now know how to make a simpler version of that safety switch, so let's make one of those. And we'll get to like, you know, actually how to make these later in the series. I just want to show you the basics behind this, you know, like if you already know what you're doing, let's go ahead and let's give us an input right here. And this input will be from the main switch that we want to put the safety on. And now all we need is, um, more logic gates, we need logic gates. Okay, snapping logic gates to this can be a little tricky. Sometimes they won't want to go. And you're like, well, damn, Dally, how did you get two switches in the front of this? I can't get one. There's a trick to it. Let's see, what do we want to use? We want to use an XOR and an AND gate. So let's go ahead. Oh, yeah, this needs two inputs, of course. One's a safety switch and one is the regular switch. Let's just do that real quick. These can be a little tricky to place, but they're not too bad. Let's go ahead and grab our other input we needed. I forgot. Okay, now let's get the logic gate. Okay, so you want to start with an XOR gate. Now what you do is, if you move in close, it, yeah, it'll let you place it, and then you can carefully move it to where you want. Now we need an AND gate for the second part of this. And we can, just, we can snap it right under it, although that can be tricky too. Sometimes you got to move in close again, and then it'll let you do it, see? But let's go ahead and say we want to save space. You know, we could put one over here too. So let's just put it on this side, just just cause. Okay. Now both of these are going to want to run to the XOR gate. These, now, these are the inputs, but of course they're not going to want to go. So we're going to have to use the wires to walls glitch. And everyone by now should know how to use that. 
If not, there's plenty of resources on the internet to learn how to do that. There's our output. How did that input get placed way over there? There we go. Okay, so what I do is I just keep one of these handy so I could easily do a wires to walls glitch. And this is a little time consuming, but you know, you only really gotta do this, you know, the one time. Now, in this for this particular gate, we want both of these to go to the same logic gate, the same XOR gate. And I'll show you how to wire this later. This is not an instructional video showing you how to wire this particular cube. This is just showing you, you know, how to wire cubes in general. Um, don't reuse the same wire. Like, don't try to use this wire to glitch that conduit because it'll come off this conduit. Now, you probably already know that, but sometimes these wires can get pretty tight and confusing on these, and sometimes you can glitch a wire off the wrong post and, you know, actually kind of not know it. Okay, now we're just going to run... <laughs> I need some reference here. Which way is it? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so now we want to run. We also want to glitch the input to the AND gate. This is actually, it's kind of funny. This is something I just kind of came up with during my live stream last night. I, it was one of those eureka moments where I suddenly realized, oh, I know how to make this easier. I know how to make this with less gates. And as you work with logic gates more, you know, you'll figure those things out. This might just go, yep. Okay, that one just went. All right. So there's there's this basic little cube. It's a little sticky switch. It does the exact same thing. It's just simpler. It's just simpler. And so that's how you, that's how you build those. They're a little time consuming, you know. And then you'll probably want to label it or something with some letters. But now, and and uh, oh, I have it wired wrong. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, orientated wrong. Oh, that's because I, I faced it to that motherboard over there, which is facing, yeah, this way, my bad. So yes, as you can see, they will only snap in the one way. So, you know, make sure that, you see that one over there, this is the front. So they, that, that is one small limitation, but it's not necessarily a limitation. I will find ways around that, perhaps different ways to build these, perhaps stacking them vertically. You know, you could swap inputs and outputs to the left and right side and snack these vertically, you know, or whatever. But this is the basis behind it, and there's so many things you can do with this because you can take these pieces. Let me go ahead and destroy this before I, I forget what it is. You can do so many things with these by arranging them in different orders. And this is just a simple setup to unlock a door. Imagine all the applications you could do with this. You could make things to control um, conveyor belts or um, process information and store information. And yes, I do have a, a way coming up I will show in coming videos on how you can make a, a hard drive, so to speak, to save and you know to save and then retrieve data. And I do have a purpose for that. It's a uh, <laughs> well, that's something that I've been working on for quite some time, but that'll that'll be coming up. And, and although this says, you know, I, I advertise this as a combination lock, you know, and I advertise this as a safety switch, they don't have to be that. These can be anything. This is, you know, don't think of this as a combination lock. Think of this as, well, it basically just a double safety. It, it's something which, when two sources are activated, it allows them to function if another one doesn't. So this could apply to a conveyor belt system. You could have this run your, you know, producing armor and weapons unless the explosives one is running and then that shuts those down. See? See what I'm saying? So you can actually use these for a lot of things once you understand how they work. You can actually plug and play these in so many different ways to create basically anything you want. Yeah, it is kind of big and ugly, but, well, it's just a game. The whole purpose is to have fun, and this is really fun. Guys, I really hope you like my little modular design. There's so much more to come on this, both in this series and in future, you know, whatever creations I come up with it. I'll be sure to show all the different little modules I come up with. And you can learn how to use logic gates better by putting these together and seeing how it all works together. It's very fun. It's kind of like playing with Legos. So, guys, uh, don't forget to like the video, comment, you know, tell me what you think. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I can't wait to do another one of these. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and whatever else, you know, whatever other crazy things I come up with building. Guys, until next time, my name is Dark Dally. I will see you all later.